it's funny to make fun of people with autism. There's hardly going to be a big group complaining about how, oh, autistic people are misrepresented. No one cares. We are all different. We all have our own personalities, interests, and people that we love. We all see the world and interpret it in many different ways. But what is the correct way to live? What if you were biologically different from the norm? What if this sole factor meant that you would be excluded from society? Imagine being autistic. Autism spectrum condition is defined as a condition which affects our social interaction, communication, interests and behaviour. But does this definition really describe the struggles that an autistic person can face every day? And even those that care for an autistic person? And how does our categorising of these people as different actually impact their lives? Firstly, we need to look at what we understand autism to be. Professor Simon Baron Cohen, who specialises in autism at the University of Cambridge, has created the Autism Spectrum Quotient, a list of 50 statements which he thinks defines the autistic person. But should we be using a list of statements to define a person? I wanted to test this out and see if it would really work. I interviewed three people from my college who would be classed as neurotypicals who aren't diagnosed with autism. Meet Luke, Adam and Megan. However, I also interviewed three boys from Southland School, a school which specialises in looking after boys with Asperger's Syndrome, a form of autism. Meet Thomas, Mortimer and Xavier. I tried the Autism Spectrum Quotient with them to see if it really is a foolproof method of diagnosing someone. I prefer to do things with others rather than on my own. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's pretty much true. I prefer to be by myself, perfectly honest. In a social group, I can easily keep track of several different people's conversations. I think so. Pretty that's not true with me. Um, <clears throat> I tend to get distracted if I'm listening to more than one person. I would rather go to a library than to a party. Party? Definitely want to go to a party than a library. I absolutely detest parties. What don't you like about them? Well, one, that it's very loud. I hate, I really hate loud music and mm -hmm. things like that. Lots of people talking, that lots of people like don't like big crowds. I find it easy to work out what someone is thinking or feeling just by looking at their face. Yeah, I think I could. Not very well. No. Now I've gotten better, but like, like most things on there, I've probably gotten better since I was younger. It's taken me quite a while to pick that one up. Other people frequently tell me that what I've said is impolite, even though I think it's polite. No. Yes, that happens quite a lot. Uh, for example, today one of the care staff called Bleed, and she had a few spots on her face, and I said, oh, you've got some new spots on your face, Bleed and she said that could be quite offensive. It is clear that we are all different, but why does this matter so heavily in our society? And why should it matter if we are different to someone else? As Rosie King summarises, our society is obsessed with labels. People are so afraid of variety that they try and fit everything into a tiny little box with really specific labels. It can be that people don't want to associate with anyone who were our car fits themselves into a box that's labelled normal. When thinking about the autistic label, I wanted to understand what specific words people associate with simply the word autism. Mentally disabled, quiet. Learning difficulty, I, I think. They're like shut off from society, like don't really understand emotions. Different wiring of brain, social communication difficulties, anxiousness. Label. That's the first one that comes to mind. Just someone who's a little different. It's a very easy label for people to use, but that's all it is. It's a label. There seems to be this preconception that all autistic people are either incredibly quiet and shy, or are incredibly outgoing and confident. The interviews amongst my friends revealed this confusion, but to me, it simply showed a lack of understanding about autism and the fact that it is a condition which is measured on a spectrum. This means that as much as we would like a singular definition for autism, we will probably never have one. But how can this confusion about the autistic spectrum actually affect our experiences with those with the condition? I asked the boys with Asperger's syndrome what kind of experiences they had had once they were given an autistic label. Have you ever been bullied or teased because of autism or Asperger's syndrome? A, a bit. I mean, I've been bullied and teased for all sorts of reasons. Specifically, my 
infatuation with Doctor Who and vacuum cleaners and obviously social communication errors that I've made have led to bullying. Quite a lot when I was younger, my primary school especially, I had a really tough time with that. I missed out a lot of school because of it. Although I was diagnosed at that age, they didn't understand it. It was because of my behaviour, because of my autism that made me different and that's what the big time I did. Statistics from a study done by the University of Cambridge found that out of the children they studied, 70% of those with autism and other characteristics had been bullied in school. But how does the media affect our understanding of autism? Can you think of any people with autism in the media? Fictional or real? No, I don't think I can, no. I'm trying to think. No. I should not know one at the top of my head, actually. Which isn't a good thing. I don't know, no one obvious. Real person, Albert Einstein, would be the obvious one. There's a book called The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, um, and it's about a, an autistic boy. Listen, Tarantino's, I suppose, on the other end. He's, he's an idol of mine, if you like. Sheldon Cooper would be the obvious one. Sheldon Cooper. My friend said that I reminded him of Sheldon Cooper. How are potentially autistic characters such as Sheldon Cooper presented? I think he's represented in quite like a negative, but in a, like a comedic way, so they kind of like take the piss out of him for it. Or like, they'll be like, oh yeah, it's just Sheldon, you know, he don't get anything. It's making us laugh a person that's got a disability. <laughs> Hey Penny, how was work? Great. I hope I'm a waitress at the Cheesecake Factory for my whole life. <laughs> was that sarcasm? No. Was that sarcasm? Yes. Was that sarcasm? Stop it! <laughs> the evidence so far seems to suggest that we victimise the autistic other, but with all the negatives of the condition being highlighted so far, I feel it's very important to look at the positives of autism. Most notably, the variation of the autistic savant. The term autistic savant was created to describe the special abilities that some autistic individuals can have as a result of their autism. For me, the most fascinating individual with an autistic savant ability is Derek Paravicini. He is blind and autistic, but is also a beautifully gifted musician. Some people may choose to focus on his disability, and may even call this bad luck, but his savant ability in music allows him to express his emotions. Despite the potential impact which autistic savant ability could have on our society, we continue to only see it as light entertainment. But going back to biological differences and similarities, I asked people whether they felt that an autistic person was completely different to what we would class as a normal person. That's like saying if a, if a woman or, a, like, or a, someone of a different race is completely different. Well. It's hard to define what a normal person is, isn't it? Obviously there are differences, so there, there are some autistic people who will appear completely different to what you would call the stereotypical regular person, but there, there are some who could, you know, who could blend in quite well. Despite there clearly being many similarities between autistics and neurotypicals, it still seems that we prefer to class people in terms of their disability rather than their ability. And perhaps we don't consider how this affects our experiences with those who will be classed as an other. With regards to autism, it is important that we move forward in our understanding of the condition. I wanted to know if an autistic person felt they were understood in society. I asked the boys with Asperger's syndrome, do you feel that people know enough about autism or Asperger's syndrome? Uh, yeah, people don't know enough and I think people should learn more. Especially in schools, in certain lessons, if they could get someone, a professional, to talk, come in and talk about autism, or they could watch a documentary or something. I think what you're doing is very good because it might have broadened people's understanding of autism. I think too many people don't understand what it is and come to a lot of conclusions without actually being educated on the subject. I think it will just gradually come back to more and more autistic people moving to the public sphere. As more and more of those people come out into the light, there'll be more and more awareness of autism. But the question still remains as to why we separate ourselves from the autistic other, despite knowing so much about the condition. Maybe it's completely subconscious, and we don't even realise we're alienating this group in society. Or is it a deep-rooted fear of the other, which makes us exclude groups in society? And should our society focus on disability or ability?
They only beat me up because I'm smarter than they are. No, they beat you up because you're different. Mother says I'm just an odd duck. And she's right. But, you know, Alan, sometimes it's the very people who no one imagines anything of who do the things no one can imagine. 